Hello, this is Dread from Epic Builds, where you can find quality content for the game Last Epoch. We work hard here at Epic Builds and would appreciate a comment and a like, as that's the best way to tell YouTube we are doing a good job. All of these builds are homegrown, no save file editing, no deception, no underperforming setups, just epic builds. Cue the video. All right, in this video, we're going to be going over Amarathi's Void Cleave Warpath build that's built around Eternal Eclipse. So, Amarathi, I'll let you take it on this one. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me, Dredd. Uh, the build is really revolving around doing very, very hefty crits with Void Cleave using the Eternal Eclipse uh, weapon. So for those of you who don't know, the Eternal Eclipse is a two-handed uh, Kopesh that's available from Raya. And it says every two seconds your next fire melee attack deals 200 up, or up to 240 melee void damage. Uh, as well as every two seconds your next void melee attack deals uh, additional 240 melee fire damage. So that's a lot of, uh, a lot of flat damage. Uh, and within Void Cleave, you can actually get both the fire and the void tag. So you can proc both of these at once to do a huge amount of flat damage with 400% effectiveness. So that's that's the center of the build is just being able to Void Cleave and take uh, use of the internal Eclipse weapon and those two buffs there. Uh, the rest of the build is really just about pumping up as much of Void Cleave's damage as possible. So looking through... Um, some of the more nodes in, in Void Cleave. I, I take the Warpath 80%. So this, this plays quite nicely because I channel Warpath for 2 seconds. And that makes my next Void Cleave do 80% more. So I'll just be spinning around, enjoying, not doing much damage with Warpath. Like back in the old days. Uh, and then coming in with a huge cleave uh, that, you know, obliterates what's ever in front of me. As well as that, I'm taking the melee damage to high health node. Uh, which is up to 125% if I go 5 points. Usually you'll need some extra um, skill levels to get it up to there. But even at 75% or 100%, that's doubling your damage uh, to high health enemies. And because you're not really going to be doing much damage to enemies before you Void Cleave them, uh, this is like effective a lot of the time. And so it allow you to one shot a lot of the mobs, even the high health mobs such as, you know, ogres and siege golems and the likes. Uh, the last node I'm really looking at is probably the champion of the void, uh, which is uh, like a critical multiplier. So getting an additional 200% critical multiplier. So all those things just means that my, my void cleave can crit up to about, you know, two mil on a dummy i've got uh, some footage there of uh, you know going up to about 1.4 but it can definitely go further just trying to balance out the build other than that uh i sustain my mana through volatile reversal and uh the way i do it is kind of i do a four second volatile reversal and void cleave having a cooldown fits really nicely on this so what i'll do is i'll i'll pop sigils and immediately uh do one void cleave and then my Void Cleave's got a 2.7 second cooldown. Uh, and then I'll do another Sigil and another Void Cleave. And then immediately pop Volatile Reversal. And that's super handy. And it'll go back to exactly what I was before my first set of Sigil and Void Cleave. Keeping me at full mana most of the times. Um, if I do stuff up, I've got Warpath in the build as well. With the mana per 3 seconds. Uh, channeling node so if I find that I've screwed around with my volatile reversal I can just go for a run with warpath and get my mana back up that way uh, some nice interactions with the build as well as I'm using wings are Argenta, so I'm moving around a lot I'm I'm trying to uh, avoid damage uh, where I can and being mobile and being able to move through enemies and, and not being stunned is super handy um, I get the benefit of the plus fire melee attack as well as the, the melee fire damage off our Genesis, which is always a little nice perk. Um, one of the, the downfalls of Void Cleave is the fact that it's a uh, it doesn't have much base crit in the tree itself. It's only got a 2% node. So I'm running a Logi's hun Hunger to give me an, an additional 3% uh, fire critical chance. So that just means that I can get up to about 60% crit chance overall with a decent amount of crit on my gear. Other than that, I found it's um, 
the void cleave hits so hard that my leech will always get me back up to full, no matter what. Every 2.7 seconds, I just need to hit something and I will go to full, always. It's in between that that I really need to, uh, to survive. And particularly the point where you stop warpathing and you go for that void cleave was the most dangerous point because it, you can get stunned and you can get stunned and interrupt your, your void cleave, right? So what I did is I've, I've taken the, the Shattered Chains belt, which is the Oribus belt, and I use uh, like a, an on potion effect to give me some stun immunity to just give me some guarantee that I'll, I'll land my void cleave, as well as putting a lot of effort into... Uh, getting some attack speed in the build. Even though it's a cooldown build, I want attack speed just to get that Void Cleave animation nice and tight really, really quick. Probably the last thing I'd go for in the tree, as well as my idols, is Void Cleave area. Uh, and it's just to make sure I, I hit as many things as possible, as well as giving myself a bit of reach. I think that's really the, the core of the build and what I'm trying to do here. Uh, is there a specific reason you're going Forge Guard? Yeah, absolutely. Um... This build is completely playable on any three of the Sentinel specs. Uh, if you do Void Knight, I would recommend running Anomaly over Lunge like I have in the build planner. But for the most part, I found Forge Guard quite effective because of the nodes Might, du Duelist, and Lethal Strike. So that's giving me uh, you know, strength and extra health, uh, melee crit chance... And I, you know, I don't need to manage Anomaly to do so. It just gives me the straight 120% melee crit chance, as well as the melee crit multi. So, like, I've got a lot of crit multi in the build, uh, and you know, I'm running Solar on Step, um, and the additional physical resistance I get within the Forge Guard passive tree uh, and the passive bonus of an extra 35% physical resistance just helps me, you know, gives me the opportunity to run Solar on Step without really being worried about making up the loss of that physical resistance. Uh, I also like Molded by the Forge. I think that's quite a good ability uh, for the increased melee attack speed. Uh, and I, I've made a slight tweak from what you're seeing in the build plan, and now I'm including Infinite Bulk Bulwark, which is uh, increased armor on potion use, as well as increased chance to find potion on potion use. So that works really well with the belt that I'm using. Perfect. All right. That sounds pretty good so far. So pretty much, yeah, that's all I have to say. Uh, how, I mean, there's not really much I can think about for the build. You've pretty much explained it thoroughly. Mm. So with that being said, we're going to get into the, the in planner here. Thank you for coming on, Amarathi. Oh, good, mate. All right. See you there. We are in planner with the build here. Just one thing I forgot to mention in the intro. This looks very, very, very expensive, but this is more of a show off of wealth as Amaranthi has been playing this game for about as long as I have, but he's never reset his account or anything. So all of his gear is after thousands of hours of playtime, but I can 100% assure you that this concept as a whole without all the extra gear will still function and do fine, especially because of just how strong the Eternal Eclipse is. He's just getting ridiculous amounts of crits now. He's just kind of like flexing, right? So if we're going to get into the skills here, we have a 24 Void Cleave, one coming from the chest. Wait, is it coming from the chest? Oh, there's actually an extra point. It's not being calculated, so he's actually at a 25 Void Cleave because of Wings of Argentus and his plus four to Void Cleave Relic that he has. But like I said, you don't need actually a plus four to Void Cleave. You can do with a plus three, and you don't even technically need Argentus as well. So you could actually go down to a pretty much a 22 Void Cleave and be just fine. You just lose a little bit of the high damage stuff, but that's not necessarily what I call necessary that's just more of dick waving for the you know the, for the dummy now we take one point travel into rift flame this will turn void cleave into the fire tag while also having the void tag why this is important is because eternal eclipse gives you damage on your fire and void attacks and it will proc both thanks to the fact that you can make void cleave both at the same time then he takes one point travel into abyss walker Four points into momentum. This is the main reason why he's running Warpath is for the more damage after Warpath, and this is pretty much always up. He takes five points into Into the Depths, 
for the 50% more damage in the area so that you can hit more with the Void Cleave. One point into Precognition for additional 2% base crit. Then uh, of course, one point travel into Rift Maker for the crit vulnerability snacks. This will make it eventually, if you hit the enemy enough, you will always crit thanks to just how crit vulnerability works. Uh, four points into Champion the Void for just mana on crit. So for instance, if you crit like 15 enemies, this will give you about uh, 60 mana back. So this is how he sustains mana on packs and stuff like that. And also the 200% crit multi is insane because, you know, he's always critting pretty much. Then two points into Dark Pathway for a little bit of cooldown. He was kind of juggling his cooldown to try to make it so that it's always up when his reversal is up so that, you know, they always uh, work in tandem. Reversal, stereotypical reversal tree, nothing new here. Warpath, so this is just literally just for Dark Nexus, right? For the mana, mainly. Then, of course, the block, right? So he's tankier. Then for the movement speed, and then for the extra, you know, for the zero cost mana cost. This is literally just for mobility. This is so that he gets the buff from Wings of Argentus, and he gets the buff from the momentum. This is literally just utility. Then Lunge is kind of just utility, so he can run through Monolith fa faster. I'm not entirely sure about Lunge and what's really good with Lunge. Although you can get Frailty on a boss, which is really nice. You can give 40% of your missing health back, which is a lot of healing. You can be invulnerable while Lunging, of course. Then, of course, you can get the Kill Threshold on Lunge as well, which is really nice against bosses as well. Because sometimes your Void Cleave doesn't crit and you have to finish off the boss a different way. And of course, Sigils for just as much increased damage as possible. He puts his on instant cast so that he can cast it for Word of Power. So that, you know, it's bef right before he Void Cleaves, he pops his Sigil and bam, hits the uh, Void Cleave and does a lot of damage. So it's kind of like a combo piece. That's it for the skills. For the passive tree here, he takes... Uh, travel points down here in the base sentinel line of course you get the armor clad he is taking a little bit more into block because he is getting a decent amount of block he's about at where is it here 16 percent. so he'll be at 36 percent block chance while spinning that's that's enough it's like a 36 percent chance to take 30 percent less damage which you can't really ask for much more than that right then of course five points into valiant charge for the cooldown recovery speed this will apply to your lunge and your void cleave, which is really nice. He also takes blade master. The faster your cat attack speed, the faster void cleave, cleave does its animations. So you actually want attack speed on this build because the faster you snap that void cleave, the faster you can get back to spinning. Then, of course, he takes uh, some points travel, the leech mainly here for his void cleave, just so that he can uh, get the crit multi and the volatile reversal. This is what he's using just to cap his resistances. You could probably mess with the points here a little bit, but mainly he just wants the leech so that whenever he actually void cleaves, he just goes back to full health no matter what because of how much uh, damage he's dealing. And of course, for sigils, he's using eight points in defiance for the Ellie res, one point into uh, honor for the extra block chance, uh, the divine bolt just for extra stacks of shred, and then of course, uh, Blinding Light, he's capping his Endurance with this as well, so that he can get up to Sigils of Hope, so he can cast Sigils of Hope. Then for Forge Guard here, he's taking 10 points to Weapon Master. This is about 70% increased damage. So one of the biggest issues with this build is the fact that you are dealing Fire and Void damage at the same time. And to work this out, you actually need to run global increases to your melee damage. Now Strength does this, Vitality does this because you're Void Cleave, and so does just generic increases the melee damage, hence why he has to grab this. It's one of the main reasons he's a Forge Guard specifically. Of course, one point for the block, six points for just extra armor when hit, just so you can get up to Champion of the Forge for increased melee damage this is very strong, because like I said, generic percentage damage is very hard to get for this build. Six points into Might for increased health, Five points into Infinite Bulwark for the armor so that you're tankier. Eight points into Duelist for the 120% crit chance as you want as much crit chance as possible with this build. So you're critting on a consistent basis. Then six points into Lethal Strikes. And then he's only taking six points, tra uh, six points into Molded by the Forge because he's only level 100 and he can't have more points than that. And that attack speed's enough to make Void Cleave feel snappy. And that's pretty much it for the passives. Now for the gearing. Obviously, 
this right here is the only required piece of gear in my opinion this is the only required piece of gear you can do all content with this version with just eternal eclipse you just have to run different stuff you have to run an hp chest you have to run like it in helm without cooldown recovery speed this cooldown recovery speed can be gained back by just specking a single node back into dark pathway right stuff like that logi's hunger technically isn't required you can always go into void cleave put more points in the rift maker to do uh, crit vulnerability stack so that your first void cleave will probably never crit but then your second one will always crit thanks to crit vulnerability because of all of his increased crit so you don't need this as well like you don't need most of this he's just doing it to show off because he's a cheeky bastard now of course the rest of this here uh force increased armor check that uh, increased health cooldown Wings of Argentus, because he's always warpathing around, and the plus one to melee fire skills actually applies to Void Cleave, which is very nice, hence why he's actually using this. You don't have to use this. You could just run HP chests instead and do just fine. Uh, crit rings. You just want as much crit chance as possible. You can actually, you can actually don't have to run this much crit chance if you just probably just use the crit vulnerability version of this. He's just doing it because he doesn't want to run the crit vulnerability for more damage, right? So he's using Shatter Chain. So the reason why he's using this is because when he's Void Cleaving, he is not stun immune. He's only stun immune while spinning with Warpath. And this is a problem because if you get uh, like Void Cleave as a long animation, so you can actually get stunned in the middle of that animation and you'll stop attacking, right? Uh, then, of course, more, even more crit chance, more health, the boots. So this is the most superfluous part of the build. You don't have to run this. This is just a meme because he's like, well, I'm a forge guard. I have all this extra physical resistance. Might as well use it, right? Then of course, he has a plus four to void cleave. The rest of it doesn't really matter, but mainly the plus four to void cleave. You can get away with a plus two, like I said, but he just has a plus four because why not? That increased melee damage is very strong as well because it is that generic melee increased damage, which is very strong. With that being said, that's pretty much it for the build guide this time. This is more of a wacky one. This is more just of a showcase of how you can abuse Eternal Eclipse with Void Cleave. With that being said, thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you're at, and bye.